State University, and I'd like to welcome you to today's CAUSE Teaching and Learning webinar. We're pleased to have as our presenters today Dr. Matthew Hyatt, Dr. Myung-Jung Kim, Dr. Michael Jirotek, and Dr. Todd Schwartz, who are all university faculty in the, in the health sciences at the universities on this slide here. For today's webinar, they will give a presentation entitled Statistics Knowledge Among Health Sciences Faculty. The way the webinars work is that all listeners are muted during the webinar. You can ask questions at any time by typing them into the questions box. We'll be sure to ask those questions towards the end and give the presenters a chance to respond. You can also use the chat box if you are having any technical questions. At this point, I'll turn things over to Dr. Hyatt. Matt, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Camille. Um, hi, everyone. So my name is Matt Hyatt. I'm an associate professor here in the School of Public Health at Georgia State University. And thank you very much to the CAUSE team uh, for this opportunity to share our work with you. We're very happy to tell you all about it. Um, what we'd like to do is talk about a study we've conducted on health science as faculty and assessing their knowledge of statistics. Uh, next. So just as a general outline for our talk, uh, we'll begin with providing you some background information and motivation for this work in the health sciences. And then from there, Myung Jin will continue with telling you about our study sample and methods. And him and Mike will talk about some of the results that we've come up with. And then Todd will follow up with some discussion points. Next. So um, the health sciences is, is comprised of a number of disciplines. The, the uh, commonality among them is really an interest and focus on evidence-based practice, which really relies on the promise of making well-informed and hopefully data-informed decisions about pretty much all aspects of health and healthcare. There are many health science disciplines. We've decided to focus on the five listed here, dentistry, medicine, nursing, pharmacy, and public health. Arguably, these are really the disciplines with the heaviest uh, research presence and, and really a focus on evidence-based practice. A commonality among these disciplines is really the peer-reviewed literature, which is, uh, you know, to present scientific findings and studies within that discipline. This has been a central theme of our work, focusing on the peer review scientific literature and considering what is needed for health scientists across these disciplines to be able to read and understand scientific reports and publications in their field. Uh, surely, you know, if you open up a scientific report, we're going to find statistical terms, language, methods, analyses, and interpretations. We decided to focus our study on faculty as really these are the educators of dentists, physicians, nurses, public health professionals, and pharmacists. They're the primary and initial source of learning about evidence in these fields. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. Yeah, thanks. So if we want to know if faculty are able to read and understand the literature, we really need to know what information is being included in it, and really specifically what kind of statistical concepts and methods are being used and reported. So an early motivation for this work was a publication appearing about 30 years ago in 1988 in Statistics in Medicine, a reputable uh, biostatistics journal. And the title of the article was, What Do Doctors Know About Statistics? Danish physicians were assessed on their knowledge about fundamental statistical concepts and methods. And those study results really found that physicians had a low level of knowledge and uh, were not adequately prepared to read and understand the literature that they needed to access. So here we are 30 years later, and we wanted to know how things improved. Uh, we expanded beyond medicine and looked at dentistry and pharmacy and public health and nursing uh, because each of us presenting today have appointments in these different fields. As an example of one recent study, if you go to the next, click once more, Mike. So there have been many studies in the literature in dentistry and medicine and public health and pharmacy and nursing um, on what methods have been used in those literatures. 
I was involved, I was fortunate to be part of a team that investigated the top care of public health literature. And last year, we published this paper on PLUS One. We had reviewed a probability sample of selected articles in uh, seven major public health journals and tracked which statistical methods were used in them. And what we found was that descriptive statistics in a tabular or graphical form were reported in more than 95% of the articles, and statistical inference was in about three quarters of them. So clearly, this is helping to inform us about what kinds of knowledge we wanted to conduct our assessment on to know if faculty were prepared to read the literature. Uh, next. So the study we conducted, the purpose of it was really twofold. The first was to assess how science faculty members' perception of importance of understanding statistical concepts and their role as a researcher. And the second, which is the large focus of our work, is assessing their knowledge of fundamental statistical topics. Next. This study was approved by the IRB at Georgia State University and also at uh, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. It was considered exempt because of the anonymous nature of the survey. We did not collect information about identifying information about faculty or institutions. Next. So the survey that we developed used the Qualtrics online survey platform. Uh, we included questions about faculty characteristics such as sex, highest degree, years of experience of faculty, as a faculty member, and a few other questions. We also had a question about their attitude about statistical concepts and a question about their importance, their perception of how important statistics was. And we also had a question about whether they taught statistics or biostatistics which we'll talk more about later in the talk here. The knowledge assessment included eight questions. And uh, if you can click twice here, Mike. The statistical knowledge assessment had eight questions that focused on these areas, randomization, observational studies, statistical power, and so forth. Uh, these were main themes that were, we really noticed in the studies that looked at which methods were used in these literatures. Uh, each question, if you can go to the next slide, the structure of each multiple choice question has four options. Uh, the first three options were knowledge-based possible answers, and if you can click once, Mike, the last option was an option for opting out of guessing. So it says, I do not understand odds ratios and do not want to guess. So if the participant wanted to opt out, they could select that. Otherwise, there are three possible uh, choices to choose from. Next. Oh, and this is the correct answer for this question, an interpreting an odds ratio. And as we'll point out later, unfortunately, a good proportion of the faculty selected answer B and mistakenly interpreted an odds ratio as a probability instead of in terms of odds, unfortunately. Uh, next slide. So the target population in our study were uh, faculty in accredited health science schools. We relied on accrediting bodies for each of the disciplines. And you can see these are the accredited, accrediting bodies that we uh, relied on. We obtained lists of schools in each of the accreditation agencies. And this comprised our study population. So we had um, a population of 66 dental schools, 147 schools of medicine, and so forth. And Mayung Jane is going to tell you a little bit more about our probability sample here. So uh, I'll hand it over to him. Thanks, Matt. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. I'm Myung Jin Kim, an uh, associate professor here at uh, Mennonite College of Nursing at Illinois State University. So, a little bit more on our study sample uh, from those. Uh, uh, target population of accredited school in each of the discipline. We use stratified random sampling to um, uh, select our uh, study sample institutions with stratification by discipline. And one thing we wanted to note here, uh, faculty within uh, the institutions were clustered within school, but we did not collect uh, any cluster information uh, 
is such as institution name because of the need of uh, anonymity. And this, that was pre uh, clearly the practical area of limitation due to faculty uh, size within school. For example, in some of the College of Nursing, uh, there's only one statistician working for the entire college, like myself here at uh, ISU. And then the uh, it should become pretty obvious and easy to figure out who that person is based on the email addresses we used. Um, so uh, clustering was not taken into consideration for uh, our analysis. Next, Mike. We calculated sample size necessary using precision uh, estimation approach for the proportion of guest responses to a knowledge questions. And we ended up with the uh, 103 faculty members per discipline at minimum uh, as in our target uh, sample size. Then the uh, sampling of institution uh, was continued until that uh, uh, minimum total target faculty sample size within each of the discipline was met. Next, please. So this slide show you our, uh, the, the breakdown of our study sample. So the number of schools we sample was uh, were ranging between 11 and 30. And looking at the uh, average number of faculty per school, uh, it kind of makes sense why uh, one discipline like medicine, we didn't have to sample uh, much uh, schools, whereas uh, pharmacy, uh, average number of faculty per school was kind of low, so we had to go for uh, more. And number of faculty invited was uh, a little over 2,000 in each of the disciplines and with number of faculty responded ranging between 109 and 179, yielded a response rate uh, from 4.2% in dentistry to the highest in public health, 8.6%. And across all discipline, uh, we reached at about 6.5% uh, response rate. Next, please. So this is a uh, box plot that shows the overall performance of uh, faculty members on statistics knowledge questions. The number of correct, uh, correctly responded um, questions out of total of eight. And you can kind of clearly see that the public health outperform all the other uh, four uh, health science disciplines with dentistry uh, performing at the poorest level and medicine, nursing, pharmacy kind of side by side. Next, please. And in order to see if the differences in number of correctly answered items across discipline, we ran one-way ANOVA and the result came out to be statistically significant. And, the fo and to follow up the overall significant result we did multiple comparison with two keys adjustment for pairwise differences. And as we expected on a previous slides, public health uh, clearly significantly performed better than all the other uh, four health sciences discipline. And dentistry uh, performed significantly poorer than uh, the other four disciplines. So now I'm going to turn the floor over to Mike, and he's going to go into a little bit specific on our results. Thanks, Byung-Jin. Um, yes, my, my name is Mike Jerutek. I'm an associate uh, faculty member in a department of clinical research within the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences at Campbell University in uh, Little Buies Creek, North Carolina. Um, to, to, I guess, emphasize uh, what Myung-Jin just uh, illustrated, the take home message for us is that when you aggregate uh, across the questions asked, public health was significantly better than the other four disciplines and dentistry was significantly worse. And we have some initial thoughts on our explanations, hypotheses on why that might be. And Todd will talk about those uh, shortly in, in the discussion. Um, the topics you can see listed here uh, among the eight questions, knowledge-based questions we asked, the three and on the top there were the most understood um, the, the highest percentage correct from everybody and the ones on the bottom, the least understood. We haven't really been able to tease out any, any patterns or rationale as to why um, 
the ones that are the, the better understood are and the ones that are the, the least understood are not. Uh, there were some interesting consistencies across the disciplines as well as some interesting and surprising variability uh, across those topics, across the disciplines. Um, while we have uh, some question specific backup slides, if uh, people are interested in looking at those during the discussion portion and the question and answer period after we can talk about those, but in the interest of time, I'm not gonna discuss them here. So uh, in addition to the results on the previous slide, the uh, faculty in all the disciplines were quite overwhelmingly um, reported reading the peer review literature. The, the least reported discipline was 92% that reported some involvement with the literature. And um, that makes us feel like we reached our tar target audience of um, health affairs related department faculty that are involved somehow or another, or at least interested in the literature. Uh, in addition to that, the vast majority of the faculty respondents, again, the minimum was 92% in any of the disciplines, said the statistics was at least somewhat uh, or very important in their role as a researcher. Uh, and again, um, Todd will provide some thoughts in the discussion um, as to the, the implication of, of these uh, high percentages on sort of the distressing nature, and at least in my opinion, of the results that we found. Uh, in addition, we asked a question on the survey to see how many of the faculty we were um, reaching were actually actively or in the past had taught statistics or biostatistics courses. And it turned out that about 18% of our sample were teaching one of the two types of classes, statistics or biostatistics. That turns out to be about 129 of the 708 respondents that we uh, received uh, survey forms from. So in this table, if you look down the left-hand column, it's simply the number of questions out of eight that the respondents got right, got correct. And on the, the right-hand column, you'll see the cumulative totals. Um, and I draw your attention down to um, the, the, the fact that 37% of the statistics teaching health sciences faculty scored the equivalent of a C or lower. That is six or less out of the eight questions on this survey correct. Uh, while 63% uh, of them scored the equivalent of, of a B grade or lower, where seven or, seven or less out of the eight questions were correct. And only 37% got all of them correct. And, and to me, that's worth reiterating that we're talking again about faculty members that are teaching statistics courses and just over one out of three of them, only just over one out of three, 37% could get all eight of these simple fundamental statistical topic questions correct. Uh, the red line that's across the graph on here is just a visual aid to help, uh, I guess, separate out or define what we would consider in, in graduate school, a passing grade of B or above from uh, grades lower than that. And again, 63% of the, of the statistics teaching faculty were able to achieve that benchmark, which was, again, uh, surprising and interesting for us. Um, a little bit more about uh, comparing the statistics educators versus the non-educators. We again have a couple of box plots here that correspond to the columns in the table underneath it. Those that do not teach biostatistics uh, are on the in the box plot on the left in the left-hand column of the table, 579 of the 709 subjects that responded. Um, and then in the, the box plot on the right were just the, the folks that uh, responded in the survey that they teach either statistics or biostatistics. And there were 129 of them. So not surprisingly, uh, the statistics, biostatistics teaching subgroup did significantly better on the test. Uh, what again was surprising, at least to me, was that they on average still only got a, a percentage score of 85%. Uh, 6.8 out of the eight questions on average correct, while the those that do not teach statistics or biostatistics, again, even more distressingly, only got an average score of five out of eight questions correct, or 62%. Uh, so while it's, um, I guess, encouraging that those that are teaching statistics are doing better, they're not doing as well as we would have hoped or liked to see. Um, and then lastly, for my section here, if you'll recall the, the statistical topics most and least understood by the overall study population, all of those topics are the same with the exception of the linear and logistic regression um, choice on, under the most understood topics. For everybody in the survey, that was replaced by observational studies. Um, in, in this particular subset of, of the population we studied, the statistics educators, um, 
the observational studies being a most understood topic was replaced by the difference between linear and logistic regression. All the other five topics on this slide were the same as they were before. So with that, I'll hand it over to Todd to uh, provide a discussion and um, go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. My name's Todd Schwartz, uh, and I'm on the faculty at the University of North Carolina uh, at Chapel Hill. And I had a few points of discussion that I wanted to make before we moved into a question and answer period. Uh, so what you can see on this slide is that we realized that the response rate that we got from this survey uh, may seem low. Uh, it ranged from about 4% in dentistry up to almost 9% uh, in public health. Uh, we don't necessarily believe that these uh, are representative responses. We don't believe that the, the sample is necessarily representative of that entire population. Um, but we do have some thoughts about who may have responded. So we think that those who saw this link and saw the information about the survey and had some pre-existing interest uh, in statistics uh, or might be um, regular consumers of statistics in their research uh, might have a higher probability of responding. Also noting that we had almost a fifth of the sample respond that they teach statistics. Again, we don't think that that's necessarily um, representative of the entire uh, population of interest, but we think that if anything, that would lead to these results being uh, overly optimistic, so that we're overestimating the levels of statistics knowledge. And so the fact that uh, these results were uh, probably lesser than what we would have expected and that this sample is probably overly optimistic, um, it paints a bleak picture. Uh, next slide, please. Also, in terms of uh, those who uh, responded and how they responded. This 94% of the sample responding that uh, they did read the, the, the literature and the peer-reviewed um, literature that's, as Mike said, tapping into the sample of uh, active researchers in these fields. Um, and of course, we know that in order to be able to contribute to the literature and to use the literature, uh, these uh, individuals need to be knowledgeable. They need to be able to take those statistics that are reported um, and be able to translate that into um, their own work and into clinical practice. Uh, the fact that 96% of the sample uh, responded that they considered statistics to be somewhat or very important. Uh, again, we think that this uh, is not representative of the entire uh, uh, population. Uh, we know that there are individuals in the population who would probably prefer to avoid statistics. Uh, so again, we think that this reflects that uh, that there could be a bias in, in terms of those who are responding. Uh, but if anything, it goes to underscore our point. Um, and despite the need for uh, the statistical knowledge and self-described importance in the faculty role, the fact that their uh, performance was so low um, is, uh, again, underscoring the problematic nature of what we found. Um, also a reminder that when we see how um, the respondents uh, performed, that these were not um, high level or advanced uh, types of questions, but rather um, basic and fundamental kinds of statistical concepts. Um, and we think this is an issue for the current generation, um, but also thinking about the next generation and hopefully uh, some of this work can serve to help correct that. Uh, next slide, please. We want to point out that um, while there are currently two different versions of the GAZE report, uh, and GAZE stands for the Guidelines for Assessment and Instruction in Statistics Education, uh, there is a pre-K to 12 version as well as a college uh, version. Um, we would advocate for uh, this type of report and these kinds of guidelines to be adapted and adopted specifically to health sciences. Um, and we have an example shown here uh, where um, one of the co-authors on this work, uh, Matt, has um, written something specifically for nursing education. We would advocate this across the various disciplines that we're addressing. Uh, next, please. 
Uh, along with that, we think that uh, if the competencies could be strengthened, if, if uh, competencies for biostatistics could be specifically integrated into the various disciplines, we think that we could see an improvement in terms of the kind of performance um, that we were measuring. So we note that of the five disciplines that we studied, uh, public health was the only one that had well-developed biostatistics competencies. Um, and we think that it's not an accident that that discipline also had the highest level of performance on the survey. Uh, other disciplines might make limited or no mention of biostatistics in their standards, and we think that needs to be improved. Uh, we note from the reference there in the middle of this slide um, that there has been a bit of work looking at this. Um, there's a little bit in the literature, but we think that there's a, a gap there and, and more should be done. Um, also, we want to note that even uh, for those faculty members in these disciplines who may not be as focused on research, they may be more uh, clinically oriented or their faculty appointment uh, may be uh, more geared toward patient care. With today's focus on evidence-based practice, again, being able to understand and read the literature and understand what's being communicated through various statistical concepts um, is of utmost importance. Uh, and again, that last bullet is uh, indicating that we don't think that there's an accident um, in the fact that public health has well-developed biostatistics competencies and also had the highest performance. Uh, so on the last slide that I want to um, make some discussion points, uh, we think that this is relevant not only for statistics education in the health sciences, but we think it also traces back to the undergraduate statistics education. And just a few points that we want to make here is we want to uh, emphasize the point of what we teach, the content and the topics that we're teaching. Um, and I think it raises the question of um, how important it is to make sure that we fit in certain intermediate and advanced level kinds of methods when we can see downstream that researchers who aren't statisticians uh, are lacking in some of these very important basics uh, and fundamental kinds of concepts. Um, so we, we, we want to make a point that a solid understanding of these basics uh, should be an important emphasis uh, on their undergraduate education. Also, uh, not only what we teach and the content of what we teach, but also how we teach. Uh, I think the, the approach that we take uh, asking what are the best practices in statistical education and the pedagogy that's being used, um, making sure that that translates not only to the undergraduate level, but also to the health sciences, where there might be a faculty member uh, in one of these schools who is assigned to teach who's not a statistician. Um, we need to make sure that we're, we're helping to provide them with tools in order to teach effectively. Um, also, uh, in terms of developing the literature, having additional work and, and, a, and a stronger evidence base um, into answering these questions, what are the most effective and what are the best practices for um, education at the undergraduate le level, but also in the health sciences. Um, and finally, we want to just make the point that this isn't just an exercise in examining how uh, well-prepared these researchers are in terms of biostatistics, but a reminder that they're doing research uh, in health-related fields. And so all of this has to do with the health enterprise, the health system, our nation's health, and ultimately the health of individuals. So with that, I thank you for your attention. Uh, on this slide, um, we note we have contact information and we welcome uh, any questions that you might have, feel free to email one or all of us, but also we'd like to take time now to answer any questions that you might have. Well, thanks to all of you for that. And those of you who are listening, if you have any questions, please go ahead and type those into the question box. Um, I wanted to ask you, and maybe Matt, you're the best person to ask about this uh, with the gaze guidelines. What have you given some thought about where you'd see making some differences or some changes to the Gates guidelines if you're talking specifically about public health? 
Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. Um, when I was trying to take these guidelines and apply them to uh, graduate nursing education, that came up quite a bit. And I think the idea of active learning um, and, you know, if you look at that case principle about using real data, it really needs to be specific to that discipline for students to be motivated to uh, uh, sort of get excited about statistics in their own work. Um, so I think finding some sort of relevance to that discipline is really helpful. Like I've, I'm, I've really enjoyed the statistics education research discipline and a lot of the articles about different fun activities in the classroom. I think uh, if you think about medicine or nursing or pharmacy, having some sort of discipline specific activities is really advisable. So you're seeing uh, maybe developing some kind of a library or uh, resource for instructors that are more the health science based. Um, so we have some questions from uh, attendees. Uh, Sue's asking where we could see the questions that you used in your survey. Are you going to maybe post those as part of the PowerPoint on CauseWeb or you indicated something like that? Um, Mike, do you want to go ahead and show, display the questions here? Um, we are, and just to share, we are working on publication of this work. So these will be available in our publications when they become available. Uh, but these are the knowledge questions that we have for randomization and, and so forth. Um, and a few of these have been sort of, you know, we've adopted a little bit from artists and other sources and changed some words here and there. In the validation process that we did go through, we consulted with uh, several faculty in each discipline and received feedback. We, our original questions had actually health specific focuses. We ended up, based on the feedback we received, we removed those focuses and kept them very short and general and pointed to statistical concepts. Okay. Uh, another question from Mark. He asks, have you any comments or results for the use of visualization tools in the descriptive statistics? Uh, we, we did not actually focus on that in our work. That, that's an important question. Um, we did not have uh, any sort of graph or, or, or so forth in our survey. So no, we didn't actually have information about that here. And then um, I'm going to chime in and, you know, thumbs up Jane's question here. She says, is it difficult to get real healthcare data for use in the classroom? So if, if, if I could address that, um, again, this is Todd. Um, I teach a PhD course um, in our School of Nursing. And for a term project, um, one of the data sources that I refer students to is some of the nationally available um, data that you can download from, say, the CDC website. So in particular, I use a data source called NHANES, uh, and I know some of my um, colleagues also have other data sources um, that are federally collected and made available. So yes, it is easily accessible uh, and with a wide variety of variables so that you can probably find something that's of interest to um, these different types of students. Okay. I, I chime in and add to that. I um, if I could, that uh, this is Mike. Um, we've given a presentation in the past, uh, in part, that included a, a listing of a lot of these common data sources we've used, and maybe we can dig that out and include it as an attachment or a separate um, slide deck with the slides here to be posted for folks that are looking for those type of data sets, because there are lots of them out there. Well, that I thumbs up that idea too. That sounds great. <laughs> um, was there someone else wanted to comment there? Or? Okay, I've got one more question. Yeah, from, I'm just oh, gonna go throw ahead. in there that, uh, in, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna say, uh, it was actually in 2015 at US COTS, the US Conference on Teaching Statistics, we had actually given a presentation and Todd had a, a part of our presentation and provided a whole variety of data sources. So they're, they're freely available from our government actually. Um, and at some point we may try to publish something more about that, yeah. Okay. And then we've got one more comment slash question. Um, Mike, Michael says, I taught a class with MBA students who had to analyze and write a stat-based report. 
And he got a comment once on a stat report of, I took the two stat classes and only learned enough to take the test. I can't analyze this report. Do you find this is common across the disciplines? Uh, this is Todd. I can just um, address uh, one aspect of that, and, and that is that I think that um, that kind of experience uh, can occur, I think, for medical students uh, in particular. I think uh, when they're taking these kinds of modules, they may not necessarily take a course in biostatistics, but they may have some, some modules. Um, and my guess would be with the, the course load they have otherwise, uh, I, I think that kind of experience uh, certainly can happen. Uh, and I think we want to be thinking carefully about um, what are these competencies that, that should be published um, how should we be teaching? How should we be training them? And hopefully ensuring that that kind of response does not occur. Uh, well, I think we all have our work cut out for us. <laughs> 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 well, we'd like to thank uh, the four of you for presenting this to us today. And thanks to all of you who have attended. Uh, we do have a full slate of additional webinars scheduled in the coming months, as well as ECOTS coming up in May. So I encourage you to keep an eye on your email or on causeweb.org for announcements about those. Thanks again, everyone, for being here, and have a great day.